Alright, hello, welcome back to the top 10 Twilight Zone list. Today's episode is to serve man. Uh, the number 9 spot on the worst. Uh, this is a fan favorite. And I understand why it's a fan favorite. Because people are stupid and have bad taste in a lot of things, including Twilight Zone episodes. And I feel that for an older show like Twilight Zone that isn't talked about as much as stupid Stranger Things or Breaking Bad or The Big Bang Theory, it's important to, you know, look at what episodes really fail. Uh, for me, To Serve Man is a complete failure in almost every regard. I bought the best of Damon Knight, and Damon Knight's his great sci-fi writer. I mean, a lot of his stories are really funny. And in the original story, To Serve Man, which is by him, the Kanamits look like pigs, so it's like, oh, pigs eating people. But in the in, in the Twilight Zone episode, they're just played by they're just played by Lurch, and they look boring. I mean, they don't even look scary, really. They just look boring. Uh, they're not cool aliens. I mean, they're not well designed or anything. And then you've got the love interest that's plopped in there. Main character's got a girlfriend. You know. And, uh, you know, he's like, mm, well, uh, she's not in the story at all. I think that's rather, rather callous of the scriptwriters to just add this woman in there who's not in there in the story. Uh, what else? There's, I mean, the ending of both is the same, except in the episode, it's revealed that it's a cookbook while he's, while he's boarding the flying saucer. And I mean, she says it in front of all these people. So it's not like they didn't hear, so now everyone knows. But in, in, in the story, it's it's said in a, in a restaurant, uh, which kind of leaves a bit more hope for the human race, I think, because they haven't started boarding the ships yet with cattle. And in the story also, they don't just uh, decode the title and then leave it at that. Like, I don't think, if, if you were hired by the government to decode this alien book, you would just decode the title and then be like oh well that, it's it says to serve man so I guess we can like I assume the Canamits have an alphabet like a coherent alphabet that you can decode so go in there I mean, I mean not even that doesn't a guidebook for how to help humanity look different I mean doesn't it isn't it formatted differently from a cookbook I mean, even if it, the language is different, you'd see like, oh, four pounds human flesh. Like, these are the stupidest government decoders, because they just decode the title, and they're like, well, I guess we can leave it at that. Like, it's that stupid. In the story, they're not that stupid. They just need more time, and they end up getting enough time, and they figure out it's a cookbook, you know? Like, also the... This, this one, everyone's like, oh, but the twist is so good. The twist isn't that good, it's just based on a pun. I mean, there are so many better twists in Twilight Zone. So, so many better twists. This one's just, oh, serve can mean help, or it can mean serve like a recipe. Why they call it to serve man? Why not like a 40 easy human recipes any canimit can do or something like that's you know that's a lot of that's a lot but then the joke wouldn't work and the joke isn't that funny I mean he's gonna be eaten what a depressing stupid lame joke and really Damon Knight's stories are all really funny but I mean, they're described as uh, they're described as cosmic talk, uh, cosmic cocktails mixed with a jigger of rye, and the, th I mean, the episode is played so heavy-handed that when I rewatched it for the first time after like two years, I thought it was an allegory for communism. No kidding, I thought I thought it was actually like the Canamits were communists, and the guy said, "Are you next on the menu?" I thought, "Oh." talking about communism, right? But it's not. It's not. The story isn't about communism. It's just about... I mean, I guess the real moral is just that there is no such thing as altruism, which is kind of pessimistic, even 
for Damon Knight, but his story is bearable because the Canamites look funny, like pigs. In the episode, they look boring. Uh, why is everyone like this one so much? I mean, it's unrealistic, first off. An alien walks into the UN building. They're not just going to receive him. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of nice that they don't shoot at the Canamites. You know, they accept them. They're like, okay, come on. Show us your language box. Say what you want. Uh, you know, but just like everyone accepts these Canamites. I mean, come on. They're, they're ten feet tall. They got big, huge, dark, creepy eyes. I mean, who, who wants to, uh, you know? I, th I, thought, I thought that the story's kind of funny. Because they look like pigs. But in, in the... In the episode, they don't look like pigs. I mean, Damon Knight's very funny. Uh, what's my favorite story out of that book, The Best of Damon Knight? I'd have to say... Eh... Man in the Jar is a lot of fun. Uh, Babel 2. I, li I like Babel 2, I think. But th the trouble is... That, like... They take this very funny, satiric story, and they turn it into this heavy-handed, sad, depressing, bleak, just... Like, it's a freaking joke. It's a, it should be like a funny, like, episode, but it's like not. And that's a shame, because Damon Knight's really funny. Most of his stuff. I mean, none of his stuff is that... is that serious. The same thing happened... in eighth grade, if I recall correctly. We were reading Harrison Bergeron by Kurt Vonnegut, and it was treated like like a real story, like Kurt Vonnegut actually thought that would happen. And I hate, you know, dystopian authors who, who think that that stuff will actually happen, like George Orwell, but when it's played for laughs, like Kurt Vonnegut, and he presents a society that's so ridiculous, it's obviously fake, like Harrison Bergeron. You know, I mind that. It's pretty funny. Uh, you know, the ballerinas with all the masks on, so they all gotta be equal. But... In the public educational system, they don't know that this story is a joke, and they're like, ah, wow, so deep, so, so what you think about the ballerinas that got masked? It's like, that's a joke. Don't you get it? Don't you get the difference between a joke and a real science fiction? Like, Harrison Bergeron isn't meant to be taken seriously. It's a joke. The TV's upside down. The parents don't notice that their sons died because they're stupid, and you gotta have the thing in the ear that beeps if you think too smart. Ha ha! But they thought it was real, and the same thing goes with the Deserved Man. The same thing. Funny, witty type science fiction with this funny little, like, tr jokey ending, like, ah, oh, it's a cookbook, you know. Which, in the story, it's kind of darkly funny. It's kind of like darkly comedic. But in, in the episode, just makes no sense, because it's like, your job is to decode the thing. All you can decode is the tile, and then you're just like, oh, okay. Like, I can't sympathize with the episode, because all the characters are stupid. And none of them even try. None of them even try that hard. And the cannabis just play them for dupes. In the story, you can identify with the character. He goes over what the cannabis plan looks like. He says, you know, we could go back to bows and arrows, but we won't, you know. Like, Damon Knight has such better description of the Canamit invasion than the Twilight Zone does, and I think that's the trouble, really. Like, not, uh, not all adaptations of writing on Twilight Zone are bad. I read the original Nightmare at 20,000 feet, and while I don't think the character sounds much like William Shatner, I mean, great adaptation. The episode is as good as the story. This is a case, though, where the story is a lot better than the episode, and the episode doesn't understand what the story is trying to accomplish, and it's just so depressing, and all the characters are stupid. And if this, if this is a fan favorite, I have no idea why, except that you think the twist is clever, and the twist isn't that clever. So, and I mean, Rod Serling didn't come up with the twist, so come off it. Anyway, that's number nine, but we're about to get a lot worse up in here.